Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher and welcome to this week's episode of Crystal's All About Books. If you haven't already caught my interview with Dr. Nora Gold, I'll put a link down below in the description box so you can watch it and find out the behind the scenes story of her novel, The Dead Man. Right now, Dr. Gold is going to read us an excerpt from her novel. It's incredible. I highly encourage you to read it. And if before you read, Dr. Gold, could you just give us um, a quick explanation of why you've chosen to read the passage that you're reading? Sure. This is a, a novel about a woman who's obsessed, and it's her journey through this obsession. The section that I'm going to read is an abridged excerpt, which takes place towards the end of the novel, um, shortly before she returns from her trip to go home, and she goes and visits her cousin on a kibbutz. The novel takes place in Israel. I chose this section because it's a turning point in the novel, without giving away too much. Right, right. It's a turning point where she begins to see clearly. And as such, it's quite a, it's, it's dramatic and it, it helps the reader understand what leads to this deep, gradual shift in the person. This is the moment, I think. Okay. <laughs> Her visit is almost over. It's Friday, she'll fly home on Sunday, and she's visiting her cousin. That's as I explained. In the orchard, the ripe avocados hang heavily from the trees. They're a deep, dark green. Their leaves, the same color, are shiny and dripping wet from the recent rain, and the orchard smells like life itself. Eve, wearing her cousin's rubber boots borrowed from his front porch, sloshes along the muddy paths, feeling happy and alive. For the next half hour, there are no thoughts in her head as she tramps her way through the avocado grove. There are no big thoughts or ideas here in this orchard, no words or worries. Just the same when Eve emerges a half hour later from the dark grove into the clear light of the late afternoon, she knows some things somehow that she didn't know before. She knows, for instance, that Jake was a really sick man, a deeply disturbed person, as dark as the shadows in an avocado grove. No, darker. The other thing she now knows is how sick she herself has been for the past five and a half years. I've had post-traumatic stress disorder, she thinks with surprise. The reason that she hasn't been able to get over what happened with Jake isn't, as she had supposed all these years, because what they had together was so good. On the contrary, it was because it was so bad, so degrading, maybe even abusive in the last seven weeks. Something happened with Jake that was genuinely traumatizing. So here's one little clue to the mystery of why I lost more than five years of my life over what was on the face of it a simple affair. It was not a simple affair. This is what Eve learned from the avocados. From the birds on the kibbutz, she learned something else. Walking back towards her cousin's house, she crosses a long meadow covered in yellow flowers and she hears a bird song that she never heard before. She hears, G, 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 hi, D. And an answering call comes from another bird. And the birds sing back and forth to each other a couple of times. She sinks down cross-legged onto the squishy, marshy grasses and flowers, and she writes happiness and joy into her music. Last but not least, Eve learns something new from the flowers. After 15 minutes of composing, she stands up and is rubbing off the mud and grass from the seat of her pants when she glances down at the ground and notices the depression she has left there. She has inadvertently sat on and crushed a few yellow flowers. She always apologizes to the bugs she kills in her house or the flowers she plucks from her garden. And now automatically she says, I'm sorry to the flowers she has crushed. Then she sees how weird this is. Surely she, like everyone else in the world, 
has a right to sit in a field and accidentally crush a few flowers without feeling like a murderer. This earth is her home too, as much as any bug or flowers. She has a right to be here and to live here without apology or shame. She recalls the words of her mother's old Aunt Mildred, sounding and looking like a witch right after the funeral. How can you laugh and sing now, you terrible girl? We just put your mother into the ground two hours ago. How dare you sing? I'm allowed to be happy, Eve answers her now. And yes, I dare to sing. Grinning a huge grin and bellowing out, G G G G hi D, as if she's Pavarotti, she enters her cousin's house. Oh, thank you, thank you. That is such a great little sample of of Eve and uh, and just of your novel. So I thank you for that, and I thank you again for coming on this week's episode of Crystal's All About Books. Again, I'll put description links down below so our listeners can go to your website and learn more about you or purchase a copy of your novel. Thank you so much, Crystal. It's been a great pleasure. Pleasure's been all mine. Take care. Happy Hanukkah.